Hey everyone, this is Stephanie Liu and welcome to this session on Millionaire Mindset. Personal branding tips for wealth and wisdom with the one and only Winnie Sun. If you're not familiar with Winnie Sun, let me give you a quick introduction. Winnie Sun is one of the most followed financial advisors on social media today. In this exclusive interview, Winnie highlights the power of building your own personal brand through live video and the importance of sharing who you are and what you know to add value. Personal finance is not just about information. It's about inspiring your audience to think differently and to think of their future. All right. Everyone, I am so excited to have the Winnie Sun here. If you guys don't know already, I'm a big, huge fan of her because she's crushing it, especially with live video and knowing that not that many financial wealth advisors are out there and putting themselves out on camera, but Winnie Sun is. So Winnie, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> ah, I'm so happy that we got you on the schedule and in the lineup because I feel like you could share so much advice and tips for people that are in highly regulated industries and they're just like i don't know if i could really do it so let's start off with how did you decide that yes i'm gonna go ahead and make the leap into live streaming well you know i think for someone like yourself stephanie you're so good at this and i and i watch you do this and those of us you know who are not traditional marketers sometimes we're really intimidated watching people like you because you are so good at it but you know in our industry i always say if you don't speak up for yourself then basically you're just part of that industry so when i saw the financial crisis right when madoff was the big thing and then lehman brothers was going under i realized it that if I didn't tell my story, then my industry was telling my story. And that was like, you're not trustworthy, you're not a good person, you're just trying to you know, take advantage of me. So I'm like, okay, this needs to stop because I know my clients absolutely love me, but I can't get more clients because other people don't know. And whose fault is that? Whose responsibility is it to tell my story but me? So that's really how it sort of came to be. And to be honest with you, the last thing I thought I would ever do was video or live video. Because you know, because because we're good friends, you know I'm like a total introvert. And this is all trained. This has taken a lot of years to get here. And my husband, even to this day, he's like, I just can't believe you do what you do now. Because like, if only they knew who the real Winnie was or what is who I know, this would <laughs> that's so funny so how did when did you actually see so, so you said that people were talking about things that were happening in the industry and you wanted to tell your own story and I love that because most people they're like well how do I even tell my story how did you how did you nail that down like did you have a team help you put that together you're like no 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 these are my mission my vision my values okay well I really wish I had you in my life at that time but I didn't meet you until a few years later unfortunately um so let that be known if, if you have Stephanie Lou in your life right now life is amazing but I didn't have Stephanie back then probably because she wasn't born yet but uh, but in Aussie what happened was you know I didn't really have that big a plan all I knew is at the time um, I think I had just given birth to my first child and I knew I needed to get out there and, and find more clients. And, um, you know, in our industry, we were just allowed to use LinkedIn at the time. So I started dabbling on social media a little bit and, um, you know, and I was always, even from the beginning, I was a really good financial advisor and I had a lot of clients that loved me. You know, I worked with DreamWorks Animation. I have a lot of really, really incredible clients. So I knew that if I could just get someone to meet with me, I knew I could really take good care of them and their money. I just needed to, to get to that door, right? And as an introvert, I didn't really want to put myself out there all the time. So, so social media kind of started. Then eventually um, I got tapped to join the firm that I'm with, which which is, I was at Smith Barney, which became Morgan Stanley. Then I joined LPL, um, which you know is in your backyard. And then they um, they wanted me to come aboard and they assigned me a publicist. And that was sort of an aha moment because I was like, what does a financial advisor need a publicist for? So, you know, because at the time, you know, um, you know, I was young, I was female in the financial industry, that's really rare. And I was doing big business. And so they wanted to invest in me. And so I started doing the media, uh, and I started working with the press and whatnot. And then one day, um, I think CNBC called. And so I did CNBC 
And let's just say, again, I wish I had Stephanie Liu in my life. Um, it was a total crash and burn. In fact, I talked to my uh, producer at CNBC now, and I'm just like, you know, I love you guys so much because I didn't envision, uh, envision this day would ever come. Like two weeks ago, they had me co-host a first live stream show on, on CNBC. I was like, wait, me? <laughs> I saw so, that. Yeah, I was it, like, go win. Yeah, it's, it's, to, to, even to this day, I'm just like, I'm just in awe because, you know, I wish I had met you sooner. Certainly, I'm very blessed because I, I do have um, now an amazing publicist who helped me during that transition get to become more comfortable in front of the camera. I went through speech classes. Um, like, they were trying to fix my, they thought there's something wrong, wrong with my tongue. I had to go through, like, media training, like, years <laughs> but um, it all started getting better once facebook live came and i just started doing facebook live yeah okay and so when you first started live streaming was was your end goal like i'm gonna do facebook live first and then all the platforms or did you start on another platform first well remember there was really just facebook live in the in the get-go in the beginning right because i think there was like something called blab or something like that Right. Or, or there's Periscope, too. But then, like, um, you know, I, I have limited tech abilities. So at the time, I didn't have a lot of help. So Facebook was, like, right at my level. So I started doing it. And in the beginning, I literally was just doing it for myself because I was afraid to actually broadcast. But it was great because just that sort of watching yourself and learning how you're speaking and all that. And then, like, that would have saved me so much money, all that speech training. <laughs> Yeah, because then you get to see like all your different nuances. Mm -hmm. Like, why am I? Why do I keep blinking with one eye? Or, <laughs> or just something, that. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then you started doing Facebook, and then when did you start to make the transition into making it into a show? Because I feel like that's the next evolution. People can easily go live and push the button, but then there's something special about having a branded show, about having your intro, your lower third graphics. Like, when did you decide, like, okay, now, now this is the Winnie Sun show? Okay, so my life is a series of accidental uh, opportunity. Nothing's, like, sometimes if you look back, you're like, God, that wasn't well planned at all. But <laughs> here's the thing. So one of my best friends up in Silicon Valley, she, like, works for the hip, she works for the hip hop artists and whatnot. So she started working with TuneIn. She said, Winnie, they want a business show for a podcast show. And like, so I said, you should do it. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So then I would drive to Venice Beach in that area and we would do my business show. That was when podcasts weren't that big yet. It was really a radio show, but then we sort of called it a podcast. And like literally, if you said podcast, people were like, what's a podcast? But we did it and you know, it, it was really fun and it was great. We started doing that. And then one day, um, somebody in my team says, you know, we should do behind the scenes. We should take some photos and stuff. So then we got a camera and we took some photos and then we started doing a little bit of video. And then TuneIn got really busy and they started wanting to do more NFL programming. So I had less studio time. So then I was like, well, that's okay. Cause it's kind of a trek to get from Irvine to Venice all the time. So then we just started evolving and then we started doing it in house. And since we already had to um, capture the footage um, audio wise, we're like, well, why don't you just hit the record button and keep video too. And that's really how it sort of transpired. And then one thing at an after another, video started to be bigger in my life because I realized that I actually enjoyed video a lot more. And um, the guests that I er, was interviewing enjoyed it more. And and I, I think the thing that I realized too is that you have to use what you have to your advantage, right? I think, Stephanie, you say that a lot. And I think one thing as a financial advisor, as Mitch, your friend, the attorney, and, and many of us in these sort of very serious professional industries can do is we have um, very big sustainable businesses. And so we can invest in our businesses this way. So when I take a look at, um, you know, I, I see like we go to social media world, I see a lot of you guys, amazing creative creatives. Um, working so hard and they've got that big camera gear and I'm like, well, why can't we do this? I mean, we we can afford it. So yeah, why not? Go. Yeah, so really, that was it. I was like, okay, this is where I'm going to invest. So instead of, you know, 
um, spending a whole bunch of money on this or that or vacations. Right? I'm like, I'm just going to really focus on this and getting better at it. And so it meant not only buying gear, but bringing in really talented people. So there's sort of like that, that change period is when I started bringing in creatives. I started bringing videographers in. I have an amazing graphic design team. I mean, it was just all of a sudden we were bringing these resources in house. And in the beginning, like many of you, you're just burning cash, right? Because you're just creating free content for everybody. And then um, after a while, it started to get interesting. Like right now, my life is bananas, but it's good. It's good <laughs> so yeah. what, I, what I love about you is that you started off first and you're like, I'm just going to test it out, see what happens. And then as you saw that it started getting more attention, more engagement, you're like, okay, now's the time for me to invest. And I feel like some people, they're just like, do I really need to hire a videographer or do I really need branded graphics? And I think that's what makes your show so powerful and it stands out from the sea of sameness is like oh my gosh look at those graphics look at those lower thirds and i love all the behind the scenes stuff too because it's like oh look at she's back in new york again or she's flying across the world again like that's pretty awesome i think that's always well, you fun. know we learn so much from you from watching your videos i mean like if you talk about quality content if you've seen your videos totally stand out because what i i said this the first time i met you the lighting quality that you do the camera everything stephanie lou touches is like top tier and i mean i go i mean my shows on nasdaq i go to cnbc it got a good day la but your stuff like from the beginning from the very first time you watch your stuff, like Stephanie lou does not mess around she does it quality from the beginning and to me i couldn't love that more and i have so much respect and admiration for you because of it because you don't get lazy you never get lazy your everything you do is like like just Perfect. Yeah. Well, okay. So tell me about your home studio. Well, the studio that you have in the office. I'm right? home right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because I remember when I first visited you in Irvine, you were like, hey, do, hey, LinkedIn crew, do you want to go to my office and see it? And I was like, yes, I do want to see it. And it was this big, huge room, and you had lighting over here, and then you had natural light. Can you tell us a little bit about like the props that you have <laughs> in your studio setup? Well, okay, so yeah, so uh, we were always in sort of that traditional financial office building, and then um, one day I, I really decided to buy a building, and, and when I did that, I said, you know, I want to make sure it's a building where everyone can come in and feel comfortable, and it's so interesting because most people come in and they have no idea it's a financial firm if you don't tell them, because it doesn't feel that way. It feels like a de design agency, so we built a studio, and um, yeah, I wanted to be somewhere where my crew, when they came in every day, they're excited to come here to work, and when guests came in, they felt comfortable, and they wanted to sit. It's so funny because they come into the office, and they sooner or later they all want to just hang out in the studio i mean to be honest with you the studio is pretty bare bones because we've got lighting we've got a couple sofa chairs that i got from costco i mean nothing fancy but it's just it's just it's just comfortable and people feel safe there um and i think um i think that's what i'm most proud of like when you walk into the office like it's a big candy bar right there's not a, a stuffy receptionist you can just come in free roam and do whatever you need to do because uh, we wanted to have that sort of atmosphere and so then now now you're at home in your home studio and yeah. how did you design it were you like okay i know where it's going to be framed and like i need <laughs> to have certain colors like how did you make that transition because everyone was like all right if I'm so used to being in a studio, how do I make that transition to making it into my home studio? Well, once again, I didn't have Stephanie Lou. So, we, you know, this is a common theme. So what I did is we didn't know that we would have to start working from home because I guess it would have been good to get some warning. But like we were going home, like everything was normal. And then like I got home and my husband goes, did you see this? And I'm like, what's this? And he's like, you can't go to work anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> so then like literally everything was set up and, you know, camera gear, lighting is so heavy, right? It took me two trips to bring everything home, lug it all home. I was like tripping over stands and like, and this is not what I do. I get to sit in front of the camera, not in back camera. Yeah. Like, he was laughing, they're cracking up. So I set everything up. I like did all the lighting with, right now I have one, two, I don't know, like nine lights and like and the diffusers and this I mean it's freaking fancy. I got the camera set up right now. I got the ice pack on the camera. I've got a fan. It's more stuff than I ever wanted to do in my life. But they helped me set it up. Thanks to FaceTime. We got it done. And now everyone's like, Wow, are you at home? Are you at the studio? I'm like, you don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, you know that you're doing it right. Which, you know, now that people are um 
now that newscasters are having to report the news at home, like mm -hmm. there's, they're, they're now looking at YouTubers and they're now looking at live streamers like, how are they doing that? And it's so cool to see someone like you are like, well, I already know how to do this. Put me on an interview, put me on like a, a media spot and I will always look good. And it's like, yeah, Winnie, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have very good teachers. Well, and then that's what's really great because as soon as this coronavirus thing kind of hit, um, so, you know, Fox, I was doing Good Day LA already, and then Good Fox News says, hey, we need you Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I do Digital Trends on Tuesdays. I did CNBC co host the show with them. Um, and I do live streaming five days a week now. And like, like today, this is my fourth video today. <laughs> And there'll be one right, right after, too. And I, to be honest with you, I don't know that I signed up for this originally, but, you know, we all did we did all social media and video for one purpose, yeah. and that was to meet more potential clients. So we don't do it for the sake of, like, I mean, brand building is certainly very, very helpful because then people, if they don't know who you are, they can't choose you to do business with you, right? But for us, it was um, always about meeting that next ideal client, that next corporation or whatnot. So um, it's really, really mindful in that direction. I mean, yeah. we are looking at ROI. It's, there's so much more potential. And again, you're establishing yourself as your own media company at this point. And now you're in demand because people see you and they, they know that your studio looks good, that you're going to look and sound good on camera. And you know how a show actually goes. And you're just, you're this professional. And that's what I love about live streaming, creating so many opportunities mm -hmm. for people. And they just don't get it, right? Because they're thinking, some people are thinking small. They're like, oh, you know, what is my auntie going to say when she sees me on Facebook? It's like, it's not about your auntie. It's about, <laughs> it's about the news desk, right? It's about the media. It's about getting in front of a larger audience. And so for your show, is it all organic or are you putting any paid media behind it? Uh, well, okay, so our show is really exciting. Actually, I can share you a little secret. Um, so our show um, was just sort of an idea that we're uh, starting off with um, of like bringing more relatable financial content onto the new, onto regular television, right? Because there used to be Susie Orman. She doesn't really do a show anymore. And, and so we wanted uh, a fresher, younger sort of uh, impression of that. And there was so much demand. So we started creating this show. And then um, it was really just a project that my team and I thought of. And then um, we spoke to NASDAQ and NASDAQ says, said, we want to show. So we are now in production with NASDAQ, which is amazing. So I would go to New York and film in NASDAQ studios and put this, and they're distributing the show as well. Um, we are probably going to be distributing in San Francisco uh, in, at the CW. And as of today, uh, you'll be seeing us. This is a secret. Only Stephanie Lou knows this. But um, our show is going on to Amazon Fire and Roku. Um, I think Roku. I, I'll know more. I like literally the emails just came in. So we, you know, it's going to be distributed more and more places. And so it's pretty cool. It's it's really wonderful because I think number one, we'll be able to share financial knowledge to more people, entrepreneur information. And number two, hopefully it'll continue to help some group of partners, which is our underlying firm, you know, continue to increase market share in, in, in wealth management, which is what we do. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so excited to see like all the things that you're doing and how you're always pushing the envelope. You're always doing something different. It's, it's just like, oh, someone else is doing that. I'm going to be better. <laughs> It's like, no. I'm going to do it better. I'm going to do it like nicer. It's learning from people like you, simply, that, which is the truth. I mean, um, it's watching you, seeing what you do and what you do for your clients. I mean, to be honest with you, if I could have rewound a few years ago, I would definitely have had you help me from yeah. the beginning because I think we would have um, probably gotten here a lot faster. Um, but now it's, it's, it's great. I think the most important thing that I love about this experience, I know you feel this way too, is my kids are excited to see me do this. And as being Asian, you know, being Asian, being super shy as a kid, and my kids are really shy, they're like, wow, mommy can do TV stuff and like stuff like that. So maybe I can do it. And then it helps them become less shy, which I think is so important today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say to other people who are in your same industry and they're like, I, I just can never be on video? Are you just like, do you grab them by the shoulders and just shake them? You're like, no, you're missing out on so much. Well, I, I actually don't because I do think that, you know, you have to want this. Not everybody mm -hmm. wants this. Like my business partner, Brandon, uh, he's been my business partner for 19 years. Have you ever met him? He looks like a Korean movie star. So I handsome. saw I saw him on the website and I was like, hmm. <laughs> Good luck to he's got huge dimples. He's got fancy clothes. I mean, fancy car. Like, 
let's just say he's very popular with the ladies, but he doesn't want video. He doesn't want to be in front of the camera. Do not do it. So I've learned that, like you know, you don't have to be. Um, you just have to be really good and excited about whatever it is that you're excited about. But certainly, if you can get comfortable um, doing things like live video or um, or social media or anything else, some somewhat out of your comfort zone, it will just make you, I think, a more well-rounded person. Yeah. And it might surprise you. Like um, I knew from even when I was a really shy person that I had something more to share. And I knew if you took the time to get to know me that I was number one, a really nice person. And number two, I was actually kind of funny. But then like you would never know that because I don't go out and talk to you. And so, you know, it's really my fault. But I always felt like I had something that could come out. Yeah. So if only I had that vehicle. So this is really so fun. Um, so I would say that, you know, why not try? You might be surprised. And sometimes you just need that extra push. You yeah. Know? Do you find that like, when you're pitching media, you're able to say, and I have my own live show, and that has actually helped you with your with your audience growth and all of that? Oh, I'll give you a perfect example so during this coronavirus crisis right so it's been i don't even know how many weeks we've been at home but you and i are in similar schedules but it's been a long time so you know um what i did is because we were very concerned i've been a financial advisor for during 9 11 as well as a financial crisis and what you don't want to do is you don't want to get to a point where your clients don't see you and you disappear because they get nervous so i said okay what can we do quickly so i knew i didn't have my video team with me anymore so i couldn't really make like those really polished videos because i'm just not good at it and I'm not good at like getting the SD card to the okay well anyway so I was like okay well I could do live streaming I know how to push that button right so started doing live streaming every single day after the market closed and this was just a couple weeks ago every oh, wow. single day I committed to it. I'm like I used to do live streaming you know like kind of lazy live streamer I do like once every two weeks whenever I felt like it or I'm kind of get lazy the pair wasn't good just wouldn't do it I'm like okay I gotta do it every day so now <laughs> Every day the market's open is every day that I will live stream, okay? Mm -hmm. So with the exception of Good Friday when the market was closed, every single day I've been doing live streaming to keep my clients uh, informed of the market, what we're doing, that we're here for you, that we didn't disappear on you, and we're still watching your money. Yeah. So I started doing that every single day, and lo and behold, like, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff now. This is almost, it's become another platform for me yeah. uh, that I didn't expect so like we're doing I'm doing a lot of brand work doing a lot of um, guests I have yesterday I had Dr. Nolan um, called Jetsu a friend of mine from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City talk about like the coronavirus and wearing masks and what you can do and like it's it it was just an idea of updating my clients and now it's become its own show yeah and so are you repurposing it are you using it like in a blog post an email newsletter or is it just facebook live that's it see once again i need more help um but i'm trying to i yeah i'm trying to if you're good at this stuff let me know i know there's a lot of people out there but yeah i think where we're gonna I'm, I'm learning is that we need to start where we're, we're resharing it to our clients in their email list so that's good but yes we probably should do more in terms of repurposing i think that's what's going to be really helpful um with the help of uh, these other distribution channels they've actually said you know we want your live streaming content on our network so i'm like all right, you can have it. <laughs> so, um, so I'm learning. I think we're learning, but again, like like everybody else, we're being very mindful of our budget, right? Yeah. Because, uh, like, just many of you know, and um, you know, doing this doesn't uh, relate to generating automatic ROI. So, oftentimes, if you're talking to business people, like my business partners and whatnot, they'll be like, "Well, you've been doing this for a really long time. When are we gonna see the money?" I'm like. Yeah, so you, you have to be really careful about how much you spend. Um, so aside from gear and whatnot, we try to keep what we pay to like a very minimum. So that way it can justify longevity and also, you know, um, goodwill. And, and when the time is right, you'll sign that client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting because I feel like most people... They only think of like one episode at a time, but you have this whole vision of how it's going to play out and how it actually lives up to the values of you and your company and your partner of, of like, the, we're being a person of service. We're helping, you know, whereas some people are just like, I don't know what it, what it I should say, right? They just want to be on camera, but you're like, no, 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 no. 
there's a purpose. We're going to do this because there's only so much time during a day and you're going to be so productive around it <laughs> as much yeah. as possible, right? And it is good. And it's a great way to diversify your income and to, to diversify your skill set, which is critical um, because I do think you know, so many of us do one thing really, really well. And as we've known from this experience, your plan B needs a plan B to a plan B. So I think, um, like you said, that's really smart about repurposing. We need to do a better job with that for sure. And um, I think that we have a lot of room to grow. But I think what we've done well is to um, just get out there and do it every single day. It's a pain in the butt to, like, you know, dress up in a suit every day and do your hair every day and everything else every day. But then um, all that hard work will pay off. Yeah, and I, I commend you for all the different live streams that you're doing because for me, even just preparing for this, I was like, I'm going to see Winnie and then for the rest of the day, I'm either going to, you know, do some other videos or just call it a day. <laughs> this was like the one day out of the week that I will fix my hair. <laughs> I know, you, you try and fill all your videos in one day. <laughs> in one day, in one day and then be done with it. All right, Winnie, this has been so amazing, so eye-opening just to see how you've used live streaming as like a jumping off point and how it's added to your whole plethora of services, how you're able to keep your brand still top of mind and tip of tongue. And it's just, it's so beautiful to see like all the things that you're working on. And I feel like, you know, we have our little tweet chats and we're like, go, Winnie, go, go. <laughs> That's how I do. That's how I am with you. I'm like, go, Stephanie. <laughs> so what's next? What do you think is, is going to be the next thing that's going to happen when it comes to live streaming? Do you think that um, people are going to embrace it more? Is it going to become more competitive? What are your thoughts? I think it'll definitely be more prevalent. I think it'll definitely be more competitive because the software is getting easier to use and less expensive to use. So that's always going to bring in more competition. So you're going to have to raise the bar even more so. So the, the days of being able to pull off like live streaming on your iPhone, I think those days are getting shorter. Um, and, and I do think like... Um, you know, there's just going to be, you just, if you're going to do it, you really have to commit to it. You have to get the right gear. You have to get the right people to show you what to do. And you have to have focus. There has to be a, a reason why people have to watch you, not just because they should watch you. Like you talked about earlier, right? You, you can't think um, of like, you can't just talk about marketing all day long because there's too much saturation, right? You can't just talk about finance all the time because there's a lot of saturation too. Um, the competition is getting so much better. So if you're going to do this, um, I'm looking forward to seeing more improvements in video. I think the the quality, right, the cameras are getting better, um, more features on these live streaming um, bits of software, like we're using uh, different like Skype, Zoom, all these different things. Everything needs to get better. Um, and, and then it'll be a competition quality. And then it'll it'll probably at some point people will burn out and not want to do it anymore. And then, you know, oh, so cute. I love you. I miss you. So cutie. I know. Welcome. Welcome to the wonderful world of working from home. Say hi. <laughs> well, with that said, we'll leave everyone and say, you know, if you're still thinking about it, if you're still like on the fence, just think of all the opportunities. You know, and that's what I loved about you is that you kept saying like, this is going to open doors. Like this is going to lead to something else. And mm -hmm. most people, they're, they're kind of stuck in that comfort zone of, you know, what's my auntie going to say? It's like, it's not about your auntie. <laughs> I know. For me, it's like, what's my mom going to say? Because, and I'm like, okay, you know what? She doesn't really follow me on Facebook. So I think I'm okay. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Well, thank you, Winnie, so much. Appreciate you. Love you so much. I love you so much too. Bye Take for care. now. Okay. Bye, sweetie. So cute, so cute. <laughs> oh, 